air resistance, it works out to pretty close to the same time as the building collapsed. Now, how do you do that? You've got all this uh, material in the way. You've got this enormous uh, steel columns, 24 of them, you know, you think, and then, and then the concrete too, resisting the collapse, slowing it down if it's the pancake theory that the official reports talk about. So you have, they talk about one floor hitting a stationary floor, and then that would slow the fall down. Those go together then and hit the next floor, slows her down. It's looking impossible to me as I do this calculation that the official theory could be correct. It violates laws of physics, in this case, conservation of momentum. So, on the other hand, explosive demolition is very fast. You knock the material out of the way below, and uh, the building collapses very rapidly. 9-11 Commission report, they said that they would give the fullest possible account of the events surrounding 9-11, but they didn't even mention the collapse of Building 7. I can almost rest my case, but <laughs> I'm not going to. <laughs> I mean, this is really sad. It's very suspicious. And, of course, not good science to neglect uh, data that's just so in your face there. It's so important. Now we're going to shift over to the towers. As you can see, uh, if you, while the, to the towers are being constructed, you see the central core columns, 47 steel core columns. Look at the size of these columns, huge, interconnected. I had a email from a mechanical engineer who read my paper and agrees with me, and uh, she teaches at uh, a major university. <laughs> and she is a little worried about her job, but she said, you know, th it's true. These buildings were solidly built, and this core, the way it's uh, put together is like a, it's, it's, the comparison is to a biological, uh, like a tree. So you have this interconnected fibers. And when wind or other stress is put on this building, just like on a tree, it, it absorbs that stress. It picks it up. Now, the designers of this building, actually both towers, uh, said that they were designed to withstand being hit by multiple 707, this Boeing 707 collisions. That was the big jet in those days. And uh, as we see in the, uh, uh, in the official reports, it's not the hitting the planes with the, uh, the towers, with the jets that caused them to collapse. That's not it. So they're talking about fire again. And I want to, I have this little, so actually the, this professor I referred to, Judy's her name, uh, sent me this photo of a stove, which she shows her mechanical engineering students. And, and she has the uh, temerity to talk about the collapse of these buildings <laughs> in her classes on mechanical engineering. She points out that when we burn wood, and in this case it would be office materials and jet fuel too, but the jet fuel burned off very rapidly. Anyway, when we burn organic materials, we uh, don't expect the uh, stove to collapse. You know, it can stand. <laughs> <All right. laughs> now, and, and, and she got a laugh too, and I thought, <laughs> I thought that's it. she's made a good point there. The temperature of the fire at WTC was not unusual, and it was definitely, most definitely, not capable of melting steel. You see, we need to be up here in the yellow and orange temperatures and red to get failure, but instead they're all down in the green and blue. It's just not hot enough. NIST sponsored uh, World Trade Center tower models, floor models, testing with actual fire and actual models, let's get this thing to fail. It wouldn't fail, <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness, they can't get the temperatures high enough with fires the, and damage, yeah. They can't uh, get actual models to fail. The floor models did not collapse due to fire. <laughs> I mean, the, it, it, the official story, fire and damage, it just doesn't work. What, we've got to face this and look at what else could have caused the collapse of these towers. If you look, this is where the plane went in. I believe it's the North Tower. And uh, in this little red box, if you can see it, there is a woman standing there. This is Rachel. Her last name is known. There was enough detail. Uh, she did not survive the collapse, but uh, she did testify. 
It's not that hot, folks. I'm holding on here. It's not like a, a red-hot oven. So I read the NIST report. What they do is they, they do a computer simulation. If you can't get actual models to fail, you know, go to the computer. There's uh, me, middle cases and there are what, what they thought would be reasonable, less severe middle and more severe. Uh, upon examination of the middle cases, it became clear that the towers would likely remain standing. So what do you do? You go to the severe case, and then you adjust the input. The in, uh, investigators at NIST are refusing to show computer visualizations of the collapse of the towers, despite calls from leading structural and fire engineers. Huh? Visualizations of collapse mechanisms are routinely used. I'm quoting from this, uh, this journal. It's a well-respected re journal, The New Civil Engineer. I'm not alone, you see, in, in uh, complaining about th this approach. You're just looking at fire, it's like you have blinders on. We'll consider fire, we'll consider damage. Building 7 wasn't hit by a plane, but we'll consider fire. Uh, NIST does have a preliminary report on, and that's all they talk about there. They say, we see no evidence for explosives in Building 7, and I'm saying, Open your eyes, you know, it falls straight down very rapidly. There's squibs coming off, I'll talk about those. What do you need? Now let me come back to this misconception, an extraordinary, uh, that is a, a large number of players. So if you look at uh, controlled demolition for these large buildings, it, the towers, it would only take about 4,000 pounds. That sounds like a lot, two tons, but 10 trips by 10 men, 40 pounds each, and, you, and you've got the... Uh, explosives that you need. The charge, and this is now, again, my friend Jim Hoffman talking about how this could be done. The charges could be hidden in elevator shafts set off via radio signals. The elevator shafts were right next to the core columns, you see. Let's look at towers for fun. These are some towers and show you. Um, you'll see squibs. These are plumes of, uh, oops, double click. Oh, there we go. Pl see the plumes coming off the side. Is these? Now, it doesn't take a lot of explosives. You you uh, pull or cut, the term demolition experts use is pulling the building. You pull these core columns, get that out of the way, the support's gone, and, and then gravity brings her down. Huh? It doesn't take, uh, I, I've had so many, I had a mechanical engineer say, man, you have to have so many, many tons of explosives. No, 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 it, you just don't understand how demolition works. It doesn't take that much. Here's another one for fun, let's try. This one, you'll notice it dips in the middle first, and, uh, and then down she comes as you pull the support. Okay, that's all it takes to bring them down, straight down onto their footprint, just like Building 7. And the towers also came down, uh, you know, pretty much straight down, but there the explosions were at the top. It's a little different there. Uh, you, you saw that uh, coming that way. It's uh, interesting, but it certainly could have been explosive demolition as well, let's see. So here you see building seven, upper right, and uh, let's see, we saw the squibs, yes, we did. Remember the towers as we, the controlled demolition, you saw the plumes of uh, gas and debris coming off, an explosion causes those plumes. Now if you look here at the tower, this is uh, one of the towers, this is the other. You see these uh, plumes way below the area where there's uh, destruction up here and pulverization, which is also interesting. But you see these plumes, and if you look closely, there's uh, substantial debris in there. And we're, we're hoping to get a close-up of this and see if that isn't actually a, a beam that's been severed and is being hurled out. But this, uh, these plumes, and I had a civil engineer who was otherwise very skeptical of my paper. He said, that really does look suspicious this plume coming off here. Is there one in the middle too? Yes. There is one in the middle. Good eye. Yes, good eye. Okay, let's look again here. This is building seven now. You'll see the plumes smaller and they're going up, not down, which is significant. See how quickly they go up? Now if it's collapsing floors, making a <laughs> air pressure, that should go down, not up. So this, this really does look like uh, what you'd expect. And you see some in the front, too, over in this area, see, and over there. I would like to talk about thermite, one of my favorite topics. 
This is a demonstration, University in California, with 